Well, hello. Welcome to another edition of That's Railroad, where we bring the railroad to you. And we got a situation here. This has been a mess for quite some time. This is the uh, third video in this three-part series where we have Steve McCarthy here from Canadian Pacific Railway with us. And uh, he's going to talk about uh, some things. Like Steve and I was talking there in the truck, uh, <laughs> you know, railroads have problems. And... Uh, this is why we come out here and work, and we've got to do some serious work here and get this fixed up. Okay, so I'll turn it over to you, Steve. Thank you. Yes, to follow up with that, <coughs> railroads, I mean, track gets pounded. The more the tonnage is, the more it gets pounded. I mean, it's just the lay of the land, nature, track moves. Yeah. Track, you're not going to get away from it. That's why we have constant, constant track maintenance. It, it, it's... Never it's stops. Never, never stops. And we need to get the nation's freight moving, materials moving, and passengers moving. So here we got a mud spot, which uh, we've dealt with here and there in my career also. <coughs> well, so we're in a truck. We were in a truck, and you noticed this joint was low. This, this joint was low. Okay. So what we do, would do here is we would change probably a couple ties out here uh, yeah. especially under the joint this was my comment right. earlier in the first video See, this this ties just that, the rails moving up and down and, and, right. that, the, and, and then the, the, you see over here this is a, right, no good the spikes are up and uh, riding just, up and down when I, you got a mud hole i guess you just can't help it you get no go you, ahead. you can't because uh, the lay of the land or, or you know the drainage yeah. stuff. one big problem we have here we had a, a second water line go in here and uh, when they graded the track back, they graded it so the water's running into the track instead of the way from the track. So we needed to get an excavator or a dozer down here to grade this away also. Go ahead. I won't interrupt you anymore. No, that's fine. <laughs> you told the story about what happened with your railroad here. So this, this spot, what I would do first, we're not going to get an undercutter in here. We're not going to be able to do... We're going to call it what's skeletonized the track, which... <laughs> <laughs> is a pain, but spots like this can be done skeletonizing the track. So what I would do is dig all the mud out, and preferably in the spring or summer, I mean, hopefully. Yeah, this would be a good time up. of year to do it. Yeah, because you don't want to be picking when it's the you know, track's frozen. But uh, if you have to, you have to, though. Uh, so I would dig this out, either with picks and shovels, or if Dave's got a great machine that cribs out stuff that gets in between the cribs, which the cribs are here between ties is called the crib. You get that all cleaned out, you dig it down all the way to the base of the tie. That's skeletonizing it. So you skeletonize a section of track that you need to, you skeletonize. And actually you've done that Dave in your past videos, you actually skeletonize track yeah. in, in a bigger production. So. Uh, next time you know you're doing a video, you'll, you'll be used skeletonized, is, is our term. Okay. Um, so then after that, let, let's say we had a track skeletonized, what we would do is we would change some ties out. Absolutely. So we want to make sure we get under the rail joints. So this pair of rail joints here, it has a, they're not staggered enough. No, they're not. They're, they're, that's one thing we got away from on the class one. You want stagger joints to, to help ride out that, that distribution because your joints will pound on a lot quicker and you have more maintenance when they're squared. This is pretty much a, almost a square joint. I've seen them when they're exactly across. This is pretty much a square joint. You'd rather have that real joint like over here and have that one staggered over there, that, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, when we had a new rail in there several years ago, that, uh, that uh, that's the way they put it in, and I don't like it either. Right, right, but I mean, that, that's so. what we're just giving this uh, demonstration here. Um, <coughs> so I would go ahead and put ties in. I probably would make sure the rail joint areas have good ties underneath. And make sure maybe their neighbors have good ties too. Right. If you have good ties in a joint area, the joints are going to hold up good with with the ballast, you know, they'll hold up better. Let's say we get the new ties in here. Track skeletonized. 
then we go ahead and bring in the rock and tamp it up to wherever we need and that'll come up to my next step okay <coughs> let's say we came along and there was no mud but there was a little joint let's say this mud wasn't here all right okay no mud here this is a little joint okay so i'm gonna have my assistant dave come over here or no i'm gonna have him stand over there okay so what i want you to do this is how we say hello dave all right everybody <laughs> this is how we were taught this is how i was taught from the old veteran guys how, how to raise rail joints all right which is this they probably do it different now that i'm gone this new new stuff and everything else that's come out so what i want you to do dave is kneel on both them ties okay and i want you to your hard hat might fall off but i want you to bend down and look down the rail okay i'm gonna put my i'm gonna put my stick here as a marker or shovel or whatever tell me where the lowest spot is Right here, this is the lowest spot, correct? Yeah, right there, stickies. Okay, so we mark that off. So then we get our, the track labor or whoever it is going to be, they dig the jack hole out, okay? So we get the jack hole out, and, and what, so that guy's going to stay there. Uh -huh. Okay, Dave's going to stay there. And what There go happen? your knees, Dave. So, let's <laughs> say I'm track jacking now. So right. I'm gonna I'm gonna track jack that up, so the rail will come up. So then he'll tell me he'll be eyeing that ball up. So he'll tell me when the rule of thumb is not to jack it even. You don't oh. you don't bring the rail up just even. You go up one or two jacks more and put a little hump, little in peak it. in it. Because when you put that rock in, right, what's gonna happen? The first train over is gonna put it right back down because. The rock has to dig into the ties and then keep that surface. So if you went ahead and jacked the level, you're going to be back out here the next day <laughs> doing it again. Yeah. So that's the way I was taught. So well, we got the jack in there. The guy gets up, the, who's ever that up. Then what we did is we, at first, when I started, we used the good old lining bars and we tamped. Okay, that was something. But then we got the family hydraulic tools and we were camping so a lot of times so we'd have uh, two guys you know and then we had a shovel guy so we'd shovel in and he he would be done now Dave would be done looking because we already got the track up so then what we would do and he, he would come over here and he would sit right here so I would so the track jack is on this side okay so what we would do is kitty corner we went kitty corner tamping, okay? So we tamped this side, so I would be over here tamping. Dave would be standing over there waiting for me. Stand up, Dave. So you would be over here waiting for me. So then I'd be tamping like this underneath. We'd have the guy with the rock coming in. We'd tamp those up. Now, a good rule of thumb is the most holding power. You want to tamp, get rock underneath the rail. So you want to make sure it's good and tamped underneath the rail. You do not want to go out here. I'm not talking skeletizing track. You probably want to go all the way, you know, yeah. because of brand new ties and stuff. But when you're just doing a regular joint, you do not want to go this far out because this far will pound down and you'll have a hump in here and then you'll have problems. So the rule of thumb is just come out the, a lot of times come out to here, right here, and make sure you get under the rail. So he does. I do my part and then I switch the tamper to him. I take off with him. So then he would take that tie and do diagonal. Uh huh. And do that tie diagonal. And then he would do two of them and then switch it off to me. Then I'd be doing this side again. And then usually rule of thumb three to three to four times. Three to four, it depends how low the joint is. If it's just low, you can get away with two, but usually two to, uh, three to four to run it off. Then, then what we did, because the rail jacks on the other side, we alternated. We turned it around and did the opposite side, same thing, three and four ties out there. Okay. So as soon as we got a good, good surface right here, we dropped the jack. Of course, we dropped the jack. Jack down. 
make sure everybody knows when you're dropping the jack so nobody gets hurt. So, <laughs> we use the uh, we use a different term for that, but I'm not going to say it on a family friendly <laughs> channel. Exactly. So I know where you're going. So anyway, um, what we do is knock all the high spikes down. We dress it off real good, dress it with the shovel. And, and of course, we're in a mud spot. This is different. I'm talking about a regular rail joint. Uh, take some of that rock and then dress it off. And, and then make sure you, you know. So there is, so one point I did not bring up. You're going to have low hanging ties when you jack that up. Yeah. So there will be a guy with a line, a nipping bar at the end of the tie and, and, and then nipping it up while you're tamping. Okay. So he's going to leave a little hole here so you fill up the ribs and whatever have you. Now, a lot of times here's a safety aspect of the lining bar when you're nipping up rail ties. Okay, I was just going to ask you if you'd tell us about that, Steve. I have made a mistake young in my career, but I had a lot of the older generation Milwaukee Road guys teach me very well. Uh huh. And they brought up points and stuff, so I had to learn some stuff. <coughs> and this was back, you know, 25, almost, no, almost 30 years ago already now, uh, where I got taught a lot of this. And so when you're nipping with the lining bar, which I'm using a stick, it's lighter, and I don't want to. I, I don't want to do that. I, I can't. So anyway, um, so I stick it in there underneath the tie and I'm, I'm lifting. So you never want to take that lining bar and sit on it. No. Or 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 or, or go like this. Like Pull it this, into you. Because you'll, if you go like this, it'll fall right on your butt and get hurt in, in that. But if you're leaning on here and you got the bar down, all of a sudden that bar gives way can get really hurt in your sternum or anywhere here or you can fall backwards and get hurt. The safety is the number one priority especially at the end of my career. Uh, you know safety is good. Safety is good because you learn a lot from Absolutely. accidents. And stuff. Absolutely. And learn the hard way. Uh, that's like when pulling ties out and I'm going to just say that when pulling ties with the tie tongs and you know we learn all learn when we're younger and we got away with more but you make sure then that, that uh the tie tongs which in a future day they'll have my tie tongs that you can refer back to this you make sure you get a good grip on that tie you make sure you pull it out and 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 then instead of right up on your butt you'll fall right on your butt backwards so Okay. That's just a little safety tip, so that's my spiel on this. Okay. Thank you very much, Steve. You're uh, welcome. We're going to end this segment here. We've got a train coming, and i got to get in there and get cleared up off track so let the train go through it. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope you watched the first two videos in this series, and I think we're going to have another one or two coming out. This is some really good stuff. Really good stuff. Hope you're enjoying All right. Next day. And we come up here, didn't run any trains last night. They had the prep plant down. Mine was down, so uh, come up here today and fix this up. Temporary, temporary fix. Uh, these tires are rotten. So, got scheduled for hopefully next weekend a backhoe to come in here and crib this out. But until that time, uh, got all these, uh, these uh, ties nipped up. And what we could, this, this one under here is ties, just, just, I could probably pull those spikes up by hand, but that's only one tie. Anyway, uh, we did try to do something here to keep it safe for the train run over this week. And, uh, track surface, I've tamped it twice, is real good. I got a bunch of good rock under there. So we'll be safe until we can get a back in, backhoe in here, like I said, hopefully next weekend and uh, crib this out and put uh, seven new ties in there. Uh, so, <laughs> always something to do on the railroad. <laughs> always something to do. So, you know, you find something and uh, you just gotta come out and, and fix what you can do with uh, what you got. And it's a little warm out here today, but <laughs> You know, like I said, this is a temporary fix until we make a more car and we get some new ties. It's cribbed, it's all cribbed out. It's gonna be pretty nice through here. This is curve 37. And we're at mile post 9.3. All right. 
Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a really good day.